Hello, awesome parents. I'm just really excited to share with you about this topic, how parents can help their kids stand firm in the face of peer pressure. How can you do that? My answer is the SSSL practice. So first I wanna start off by talking about what is peer pressure and, and even what is bullying. So peer pressure is when children are trying to pressure other children to do things that maybe they wouldn't normally do. And it can really easily cross the line into that bullying territory. So just to speak about bullying as we define it in the public school system is, it's repeated, it happens more than once. It's an imbalance of power, whether that power is social or economic or racial, one child has an advantage over another. It is purposeful. So someone is intending to harm the other person, even though they've been told like, don't do this, this hurts, please stop. They're pressuring them to try to make them do something maybe they wouldn't normally do. And it can be something that's verbal, it can be physical, it can be mental. Like, you know what, you're not going to be in our circle um, it can be cyberbullying. It can be in so many different ways. But usually, whether it's peer pressure or whether it crosses that line over into bullying, there's a triangle that happens. So there's someone who's a victim. There's someone who's actually doing the bullying. And there's always someone who's a witness. So that witness might be right there on the spot where they see that peer pressure happening like right then and there, or they see the bullying happening right then and there, or maybe it's just someone in their class who knows that student X is the student who's always picking on people or who's always pressuring people, who's always saying, you have to come and sit by me and leaving others out. So you usually have a witness you usually have the person who's doing the offense, and then you have that victim. There are three parts, don't forget about that. So what is the SSL practice? The first S stands for stand firm, because as a parent, we wanna know what can we, what can we tell our children? What can we teach our children to help them to face this peer pressure or this bullying, this ugliness that they're going to face in the world, ultimately? The first S means stand firm, please. And I, it, it's, it's easier said than done, but to tell and to teach our children to do not compromise themselves for anyone. It doesn't matter if that person doesn't want them to be in their circle or their group. We don't want our children to go along just to get along. And it's very important that our, our children stand firm and who they are. Many times our children will just give in because they don't want to be the, the child that's left out alone eating lunch at the lunch table, or they don't want to be the only one on the park bench and no one picked them to be on the team. But it's important that your child, that our children stand firm and they know and realize that if someone is treating them in a way that's not okay, it's not our children's fault, it's that other person's issue. So stand firm, it's okay to be okay. It's okay to be alone. It's not okay, however, when that line of peer pressure crosses into that territory of bullying. So let's just keep that on the radar. The second S is speak up. So first we want them to stand firm. They're not going to compromise who they are. Secondly, we want them to speak up, use their words. If someone is doing or saying something that dishonors who they are, we want to teach our children to speak up. In our society, sometimes it's so easy to say, you know, I'm just not going to say anything. I'll just, no, speak up. I didn't like it when you did. You're being disrespectful. It's not okay for you to treat me this way. So we want your children to use their voice, especially now at this young age, because it's a life lesson and life training that will carry them for the rest of their lives. I mean, just think about it. If they happen to go and they ordered uh, a burger from Burger King and your child is absolutely allergic to cheese, absolutely allergic, 
And when they get that burger from the burger place, it's loaded with cheese. Is your child going to be the one that says, oh, I'll just take it? No. We have to teach them to use their voice. It doesn't mean being adversary. It doesn't mean being confrontational, but it means speaking in their truth and clearly saying that this is not okay. And if they can speak up over a cheeseburger, by golly, they can speak up over who they are because they are someone who is very special and a child of God. Now, if your child doesn't feel comfortable maybe speaking up, maybe they're still growing that because it doesn't just happen overnight being able to speak up. Some children are more introverted. We want our children to always know that it's very important that they tell someone. So whatever it is, good or bad, we want them to feel comfortable with going to their parent or they can go to their school member or they can go to their church. It's important that they tell someone that someone is treating them in a way that is not okay. They've got to speak up. I've had uh, children even, I said, you know what? You can just write it anonymously if you want. You don't have to necessarily just tell me. If you want to put it in writing, that's okay. Put it in writing. If you want to send an email, but you have to speak up. Whenever we don't speak up, we're teaching others how to treat us. And sometimes maybe the person who is committing the peer pressure or the bullying, maybe no one has ever told them, stop, that's not okay. Maybe they just haven't learned a different way because no one ever spoke up. So it's very important for our children to use their voice and for them to know that they have something that is worth hearing, worth deserving of to, to hear, to say. And it's very important that they let whoever it is know who is dishonoring who they are, that it's not okay. The third S is for our children to see clearly. If we could give our children anything, I know I do this with my children, I want them to see themselves. And it's easier said than done, especially when they're eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, the teenage years. I want them to see themselves the way God sees them the way God sees others. We want our children to see themselves as being beautiful, regardless of whether they're tall, whether they're short, whether they have acne, whether they have braces, whether they have braids, whether they have straight hair, whether they have no hair, they are absolutely beautiful because God says they're beautiful. We don't have to fit into what the image is that we see on a computer screen or in a magazine or what the world says, every single human being has worth. Every single human being has value. And every single human being is worthy of respect. So we want our children to see themselves the way God sees them. Because when they start comparing themselves to the way others see them, the way man sees them, then now that's where we start getting a little sideways there. Also, it's very important for our, our children to see others because folks who love you, individuals who love you, will not hurt you. So who are really those individuals that they're spending all of that time with? What are they pouring into your child? Are they pouring into your child kindness? Are they pouring into your child encouragement? Are they pouring into your child, uh, you know what, you got this? I care about you, not because of the way you look, not because of what you have, not because of what you've done for me, but I value you because you are a child of God. So now's the time to start talking to our children about those value relationships, those value added relationships. And anyone who would dishonor them, who would disrespect them, who would discourage them, that's not a relationship that they want to invest in. So the SSL is first, we want them to stand firm in who they are. Don't go along just to get along. We want them to speak up, use their voice, say, you know what, that is not okay. And if they can't say it to that person, they can go and say it to someone else they trust. So who is it that they trust? We want them to see themselves clearly and to also see others clearly by the others' actions towards them. 
And then the last principle is L, let go. They got to let go of the toxic people who maybe call them a friend. Is that person really a friend? They got to let go of the need to feel like they have to be a part of the group. They have to be a part of the Fab Five. They have to be in the circle. They have to be in it so badly that they would even sacrifice who they are. They got to let go of, you know what? I'm going to be a victim or I'm going to be a bystander. What does that mean? Remember I started off with that triangle? We have the victim. We have the perfect person who's perpetrating being a bully or actually doing the peer pressure. And there's usually that bystander, that witness. So the witness bears just as much responsibility as everyone in that triangle. If I'm witnessing someone who is treating someone unkind, and that's a friend of mine, I need to evaluate that relationship. If I'm witnessing someone who is uh, treating someone unkind, I need to speak up on that person's behalf. It's okay. And it may not be that I'm going and I'm confronting because that's not what I'm saying, but it does mean that I am going to confront what is being done that's wrong and not be a bystander and allow someone else to be mistreated just like I wouldn't allow myself to be mistreated. So S S S L. Once again, this is just a great beginning of a conversation with your, your child because it's a beautiful journey. And in life, they're going to encounter just maybe peer pressure where someone's trying to get them to do something that that other person wants them to do, or it could cross the line into bullying. So it's important that our children stand firm, speak up, and make sure that they see themselves clearly and let go. Thank you for letting me share with you today.